Hey, hey everybody, I hope you're doing well today. A quick little invitation to all of you IB Economic students to head on over to my website, bradcartwright.com, a website designed to help you improve your scores in IB Economics, whether that be on an in-class quiz, a test, or ultimately the IB exam. So if you want some more information, check out the description box below. And other than that, enjoy this video. All right, let's take a look now at paper three, which is a paper unique to high level students. So if you're a standard level student, you do not need to watch this video, okay? But you high level students, of course you gotta take paper one, you gotta take paper two, and you gotta take paper three. So let's take a look at what is asked of you as a student on paper three, okay? Paper three is a policy paper, okay? Which means that in the end, you are going to recommend as an economist, what sorts of government policies should be put in place as a result of the information that you have been given, the answers you've been giving in the earlier part of the question, and claim it, own it, make a recommendation like they do in real life. You know, like economists, they work for governments. Most, well, if you think about economists working for governments, what do they do? Well, they look at real life situations like unemployment rates, like inflation rates, like trade, like you know, um, taxes on certain products, and then they give, a, they give a suggestion, recommend a policy suggestion to whom? To politicians, to government officials about how to manage the economy. And that's what you're being asked to do. It's such a compliment, really, that the IB is asking you to do these things. Okay, so what are the elements of paper three, the policy paper? Of course, this is only for high-level students. This, can, this is, uh, makes up 30% of your composite IB score. You may use a calculator. It comes with this, an examination booklet for all your answers, so it actually looks physically different than the other papers, okay? All numerical answers require whole numbers or only up to two decimal places. And the own figure rule followed. What that means is you should go error carried forward. What, what it means is that if you make an, an ex this will make more sense when we look at the different questions. But if you make a simple computation error in part A, um, but you carry forward that error, in other words, all of your explanations are good, you'll lose points for the calculations, but you won't lose points for any sort of calculations that were based on that original flaw, right? So in other words, your own figure, your messed up figure, your mistake, if it's carried forward, will only count against you once, not multiple times throughout um, the paper, okay? That makes sense, cool. So the structure of the paper. Well, first of all, questions come from all four units of the syllabus. Two questions, there are two questions given to you on the paper. You must answer both. Did you hear that? Both. What's that? Both. You must, must answer both. Two questions, you must answer both. So you don't get no choice. Okay, cool. So uh, each question has eight parts. You will have 45 minutes to take this paper. Okay, so advice. What does it mean? Well, parts A through H, okay, you will be given material, graphs, data sets, short article from which you extract the data to provide definitions, provide calculations, or provide explanations. You will not be asked for synthesis or evaluation. So you're going to be given a bunch of information and then you need to find that, either define a term, calculate some sort of unemployment rate, inflation rate, blah, 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 or provide explanations using definitions of what that means, okay? It's like a watered down version of analysis. You just give them what they want, okay? Cool, that's for parts A through H. Then for part I, right? This is where your policy question comes in. You have, this is basically an evaluation question. Here you'll be asked to provide a policy recommendation based on the information you have been provided using appropriate evidence to support your thinking, okay? How are you gonna do that? You are going to synthesize your answers A to H to provide an appropriate policy. And Jocelyn Blink and Ian Dorton in their beautiful um, IB course companion provided us with this example that might be a question for part I on paper three of the policy paper which says, using the data provided, your knowledge of economics, and your answers to parts A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H, recommend a policy that would be introduced by the government of whatever country, country Y, to address the problem of obesity 
Hey, check it out. That sounds like evaluation. Hey, check it out. It is. Hey, check it out. Wow. Part I is evaluation in paper three. Hey, part G in paper two is evaluation. Hey, part B in paper one is evaluation. Yeah, you know why? Because there are only five elements. I've been telling you this. Five elements in all of economics that you must know. Definitions. Oh, that's on paper three. Calculations. Oh, that's on paper three. <laughs> Diagrams. Oh, that's on paper three. You'll have to interpret them. Ah, uh, um, analysis, oh, you have to interpret, that's on paper three, and evaluation, policy paper, okay? So again, over and over and over again, you are asked to do those five elements, and it's really important um, that you master them, that you master all of them. You don't, you don't stress one over the other. And one thing that does happen as you go through economics is like, you get really good at analyzing and you get really good at evaluating. What you have to do before you sit down to take the IB exam is go back to the basics. It's like Quizlet heaven, like go or hell, depending on how you look at it. Go back to the definitions, know them, own them, so you don't lose marks on things that you can totally control. Like an IB examiner cannot take half points off an, an, um, a definition that's perfect, right? Evaluation analysis is somewhat subjective. They can't take half points off for, for a calculation. Get the calculations right. Get the definitions right. You have the power to do that, and it's just a matter of putting in the time. Okay? So, there you have it. Paper three, that's for you high-level students. Um, a pretty easy paper in terms of the structure, right? But as a lot of information, it can come from any direction. It can come from, you know, introductory level. It can come from, uh, sorry, microeconomics. It can come from market power. It can come from macroeconomics, global economy. All right, you get it. You get it. You get it. And we're rolling, my friends. Rolling, rolling. On to the next video.